Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. But I'm excited uh, today uh, to, to be here again. You know, Sunday, it really is my favorite day of the week. It really is my favorite day of the week. Maybe it is for you, maybe it's not, that's fine. But for me, Sunday is my favorite day of the week because I get, we just get to come together as a family, as a church, and worship together and fellowship together and just be together. And so I just love uh, Sunday mornings. But I just wanna welcome you uh, to church today. We're so excited um, that you are with us today. And last week, we started a new series. And if you're with us, you know we started this series called Back to the Basics. And really, again, basics is defined as the essential facts or principles of a subject or skill. And when I was in Bible college in Los Angeles, um, one of the things that that people would say would be like, are you ready to get a heavy revy? And at first I was like, what are you talking about? They're like, a heavy revelation is what they they meant. And that's just like what they would say. It's like, because in... In, in uh, Los Angeles, it's like super cool, right? Everyone cool is in Los Angeles, right? And so there's a heavy, revy, heavy revelation. But I'm gonna be honest, the point of this series is not to have like these like massive revelations. It's to go back to the basics. Like really like, like, like I, we're going back to the very formula or the very beginning of what the church was supposed to be back in the day and what God was doing and how the church operated and the things that they did, the essential principles that they did that made them the church as they were growing day by day and moment by moment as people were coming to know Jesus and they were getting baptized and they were worshiping together. And that's kind of the point of this series is really just to go back to the basics of what it means to be the church. Go back to the very beginning, very basics of what it means. And so I've been enjoying this series. Again, it says only week two, but I'm really excited um, as we continue through the series over the next few weeks. And we've been going through Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, just a few verses here that we've been going through. So I just want to read it together today, and this is what it says in verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So that's what we went through last week. And verse 43 A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity." all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Right, if we wanna go back to the basics of what the church is, this is really the start of what we see as like the modern, modern church, is this right here. Because again, I think I shared this last week, but in my Bible, it's the New Living Translation, it's got this heading that says, the believers form a community. And we, we, we want to grow as in fellowship. If we want to grow as followers of Jesus in community, this is really what we're supposed to be doing. If you read through these few verses, this is what the church, the basic point of the church is really this. And again, our goal is to bring us back to the basics of church and what we saw them do in the early church. And so last week we started talking about the church And we basically said three things, that the church is supposed to be devoted to teaching, devoted to fellowship, and devoted to prayer, right? That's the basic, you know, know, mission statement, if you will, of what the church is supposed to be, the basic purpose. But today we're going to go through the next verse, and I think it's it's very powerful, but this is Acts chapter 2, verse 43. And this is what we're going to be talking about today is this. It says, a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. You know, when it comes to following Jesus, there's supposed to be this level of awe about what God is doing. There's supposed to be this, 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 uh, this amount of wow. 
wow. Like, like, wow, look what God is doing in my life. Look what God is doing in our church. Look what God is doing in our city. There's supposed to be this awe where we come into the presence of our holy God and we're struck by just awe of who he is and what he's doing. It says there's a sense of awe and they saw and performed signs and wonders. They saw God moving in a powerful, powerful way. My prayer today is that I can bring some clarity uh, to, to, on signs and wonders. That's my, my hope today. Again, like it's very basic what I'm gonna be talking about today. Like it's very basic. We're going back to the basics, the key essentials of what this means. So my prayer is that we can bring some clarity to this and we're gonna be going through some questions, really, just questions about signs and wonders. And so the first question I wanna go through, and this is so basic, is what are signs and wonders, right? Like what are they? What are they supposed to be? And signs and wonders, if you really, basic, what they are is experience, experiences that are miraculous, really. That's what signs and wonders are. Things that go against what's normal, go against, you know, the earthly things, like goes against it, like when Jesus multiplies all the food or when Jesus walks on water, like the things that shouldn't happen, but with God, things happen. That's really the basics of what signs and wonders are. Things that go against the natural for us as humanity, for the, for, for, for the earth, right? That go against it all in the Bible, if you read through the Bible, we see story after story and moment after moment of signs and wonders and miracles and healings happening throughout Scripture. All the way from Genesis all the way through to the end of the Scriptures. And we're still seeing things happening today, signs and wonders. We see Jesus healing the sick and we see blind people seeing and people who can't talk or speaking and those who can't walk are walking. And we even see people raised from the dead. We see multiplication of food. We see multiplication of resources. We see, we see this throughout the Old and New Testament. We see miraculous signs of darkness or rain or, or, or no rain or, or light. Even walking on water or running really fast. Right? We see God speak through a donkey. And we see him speak through a bush. We see fire, right, coming from heaven, and we see battles being won, and we see people being filled with courage and strength and the Holy Spirit coming in powerful ways and people conquering and doing amazing things. We see signs and wonders throughout Scripture. This is what signs and wonders are. Something miraculous taking place that goes against the natural of our world. And so the next question I want to go through today, and again, this is so basic, but does God still do signs and wonders today? That's the question. And, and to be honest, there is actually debate on this. There's debate on whether or not God still does signs and wonders. There are some people who would believe that, that signs and wonders ceased when the apostles died. That's what some people would believe. Now, I'm going to share what I believe, and I believe, does God still do signs and wonders today? I believe the answer is yes. Wow, right? Are you shocked? Like, awe, right? The awe. I truly believe God still does miracles today. I truly believe this. For one reason is I've experienced it. I've experienced the supernatural taking place. I've shared stories of what God has done in my life that doesn't even make sense. But I've also seen it happen. I've also read stories of what God is doing today. The signs and the wonders that take place. And I want to share with you a story that I, that I came upon this week. And they actually made a movie about this, but I've never seen the movie. So if you watch it and it's horrible, not my fault. But it was Easter weekend in 1993. A, name, a girl named Emma McKinley lost her balance and fell from a storage loft at work. And her foot was lodged between boxes and her body hung upside down until a coworker found her and called 911. 1993. She says, my head hit something very hard and it did not come to until the next day, is what she remembers of the story. And as, as she was healing from her wound, she received, as she received in the fall, she developed widespread reflux, sympathetic dystrophy, 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 thank you. I'm not a doctor. Known as RST. It's like, it's not even a hard word, right? A chronic and progressive nerve disorder that left her entire body in severe pain. 
Not only was she in severe pain, but she was also wheelchair bound with one of her feet and hand being uh, beginning to grow crooked. But McKinley never, never gave up and she firmly believed that God would heal her. And as the years forged on, the doctors wanted to amputate her legs and she refused. She said no. Then one day something incredible happened and McKinley, she was given uh, the healing she'd so longed for. And it was Christmas Eve 2011. I find it so interesting that she has this accident Easter weekend. And then 2011, which was about 12 years ago, right around this time actually, 12 years ago, that it takes place Easter, Easter and Christmas. So, so unique. It says, Christmas Eve 2011, when McKinley fell out of her wheelchair and was on the ground and experienced intense pain for eight hours. And this is what she says. She said she claims that Jesus literally entered the room and healed her. And while she might, that might seem totally wild, the next day she was walking around out of her wheelchair as though nothing had happened. And this is what she says she saw. She says, says what I saw was the most awesome white robe. I love she said awesome. It's awe, right? That's really awesome is full of awe, right? We use it in a weird way now, but. I saw this most awesome white robe. And I knew who it was. Our human eyes can hardly look at it. It's so bright white, she told CBN News. Jesus was straightening out that crooked foot. I knew my neck was being straightened. My spine was being straightened. And when her family arrived the next morning to celebrate, they were in awe. There's that word awe again. It was the first time since 1993 that she was seen out of a wheelchair. A miracle moment her son called surreal. It's one of the miracles that God that, that God is still doing today. Now, this is just one story, right? This is, it's a big story, but this is just one story of God bringing healing and bringing the miraculous, bringing signs and wonders today. So I truly, truly, truly believe that God still does things today. I truly believe it. And people might argue with me, but I'm like, look what God has done in my life. Look at the beauty of what he's done. Look at the provision. Look at the healing. Look at what God has done in my life. And we can sit in awe of what God has done. And I think that's something that when we go back to the basics, I think sometimes, at least for me, I get so busy that sometimes I either miss the miracle or I forget about it very quickly. Right? Sometimes I just miss it because I'm so busy. God provides and I'm like, sweet, on to the next thing. But there's this moment where I think as believers, we have to sit back in awe of what God has done. Look what God has done. I think we have to sit back in awe of God, thank you. We can't take the miracles for granted. We can't take the miracles. If you remember when Jesus heals people, it says like some of them would just jump up, dance, and like be just excited. Some of us, it's like God provides, we're like, that's it? I wanted $500,000, not $50,000, God. Did you look at what I asked for? It's not enough. It's like, wow, are we really taking for granted what God has done in our lives, the miracles we've seen? We have to sit back in awe. It says they were in awe. They were believers. Like, it wasn't like they were like, like, like just like new. They were like, some of them, like the disciples, they were in awe of what God was doing. And imagine walking with Jesus. How many awestruck moments do you think they had, right? Like, can you imagine being the ones distributing the bread and the fish? Being like, why is my basket not empty yet? Like, I fed my, my family, and I'm like, wow, we're running low on spaghetti noodles. They're like, it's not running low. Imagine walking and seeing the awe, yet still, after Jesus was gone, signs and wonders came, and they were still in awe of what God was doing. In awe and wonder. What God was doing around them. We have to be in awe of what God is doing. I believe God is still doing wonders today. I believe he's still bringing miracles. I believe he's still healing people today. And every time I hear about it, I sit back in awe of the beauty of what he's done. The next question I want to go through is this. Is what are signs and wonders for, right? What's the point? Like we have to know the point. Like we know what they are now. We believe they're still for today, but why, right? Like, what's the point of signs and wonders? And I have three things, and there's more, but I have three things. Number one is to prove. It's to authenticate the messenger as well as to authenticate our God. 
God uses signs and wonders to prove his power and prove his love. And we see this all through scripture, right? We see Moses, right? He had the plagues. We had a message a few weeks ago. We talked about Moses and all the plagues and what they actually meant and all that. Elijah, right, called fire down from heaven. You know, Jesus had the healings. He had the feedings. He, he, was, he saved people, right? And this is what it says in Mark 16, verse 20. When it comes to proving, it says this. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them, confirming what they had said by many miraculous signs. So God uses signs and wonders to prove who he is, as well as to authenticate the people who are bringing the gospel. That's the first reason why we have signs and wonders, that signs and wonders came after the message. So the gospel was presented, God loves you, he cares about you, boom. And then the signs and wonders came and they were healing people and providing and everything was amazing. God was moving. Signs and wonders are to prove the goodness of God and to authenticate the messenger. Number two, what are signs and wonders for? Love. To show his heart. If you read through the life of Jesus, what the scriptures show us is time after time after time, it says this, Jesus had compassion on them. There's moments where Jesus is grieving in his own heart and it still says he had compassion on them. So many times we see this happen, showing God's love and his heart for his kids. And this is what it says in Mark 9 verse 35. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless. Y'all ever feel like that? I do a lot. Like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his fields. There's, there's so much in this, but the main thought is this. He has compassion on us. And for God so loved the world that he sent his son. You know, at, at Known Victory Church, you know what I want to be known for? is how well we love. That's what I want to be known for. How well we love each other. How well we love our city. How well we love our brothers and sisters. How well we love. That's what I want to be known for. How well we love. That compassion is what leads us to sharing Jesus with people. That compassion is, and love is what the signs and wonders are for, is to show God's love for humanity. He has compassion on us and therefore he does things to show us his love and he calls you and I to be a part of it. The, us broken humans, he says, I want you to be the one who brings my love into the world. I'm calling you to bring the love, to bring signs and wonders and the miraculous and the power into the world. And one thing I know is that our world is desperate for Jesus, but they don't know it yet. People need Jesus. People need his love. Desperately need his love. And again, I want to be known, you know, me, I want to be known personally for how well I love. And I'm not going to get it right all the time. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to make mistakes when it comes to loving my kids and when it comes to loving our church. I'm going to fail. But I want, when I get to the end of my life, I want people to say, he so loved people. So loved people. And the only way that I can get that love is from Jesus. Showing his love. And then the third uh, point of signs and wonders is this, is experience. To taste and see. I can explain to somebody. I remember when I went to, on a mission trip, I was in Thailand. 
And it's very unique when you go to a, a new country that has a very different geography than you. Because trying to explain to somebody who the coldest weather they've ever really experienced is maybe like 20 degrees, 15 degrees, what it's like at minus 40. Like, how do you explain that to somebody? You can't. You're like, well, you can't breathe. It like, it like hurts when you go outside. And you have to start your car for like 15, 20, maybe two hours before you hit the road. Right? Like, like how do you explain it to somebody? Like, I can't explain to you how cold something is. I can't explain to somebody wh- how, what a steak tastes like. But you have to experience it and taste and see what it is. It's, knowing Jesus is not just about what we know. It's about knowing his love and experiencing his love. And God does this often through signs and wonders. We can experience more of who he is. To experience his love in a deep and profound way. Now I'm going to tell you something real quick though. That knowing Jesus and following Jesus is not about the experience. Some of us, we worship the experience rather than the Savior. Yes, the experience is important. It should draw us closer to Jesus. But if all we're craving is the experience, there's going to be times where you're not going to have the experience. And we cannot base our faith on what we experience. Yes, it's important, and God does does show us things, signs and wonders, but we cannot worship the experience. Because there's going to be times where, yes, we have it, and it's amazing, and like worship hits us, and we're like crying, and there's going to be moments where in worship we're like, man, I need to get my car into, get an oil change. Sometimes we're not going to experience it, and some of us, we stop worshiping when the experience fades. It's not about the experience. I don't worship God for me. I don't go to him and say, God, I'm worshiping you today. I need something from you. I go to him and say, you are so good. No matter what I go through, I'm sitting here on my knees saying, you are good, declaring it over my life. It's not about the experience. Yes, God uses it, right? Psalm 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, we should experience God. Yes. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Signs and wonders give us an opportunity to experience God, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, we can know him in truth. Yes, we can read the scriptures. We can know them. But have you ever actually tasted his goodness? Have you ever experienced his deep and profound love for you? Truth is important. When we talk about experience is important, truth is also important. But we also have to experience his grace. Signs and wonders give us a small glimpse of his goodness. But I want to tell you the greatest sign and wonder you will ever experience is when you will enter eternal life. Every sign and wonder, every miracle, and every healing, let's be honest, is temporary. Lazarus, eventually died again. I don't think Lazarus is chilling right now in Jerusalem, right? Like, because if he was, it'd be like a sight to see, right? Like, I'm going to Jerusalem just to see Lazarus sitting there like, yeah, I died, but now I'm eternal, right? Like, that's not how it works. He died again. So signs and wonders are very good, and we should be experiencing them and you bringing them, but they are all temporary. When Jesus fed the 5,000, they went away and probably needed to eat again. The only permanent miracle is Jesus' death and resurrection, and as a result, our salvation. That's the only permanent miracle. And to be honest, that miracle is enough. His grace is sufficient for you. Now, I really want to quickly tell you two things that signs and wonders are not. Number one is that signs and wonders are not an ego boost. Signs and wonders are not designed to build your kingdom, to build your following. They are designed to build his kingdom. And I think sometimes we get so caught up of like, look what God, look, look at me, right? Look at what I've done. It's like, who cares? The only thing that matters is not an ego boost for you. It's building God's kingdom. My kingdom is irrelevant. Does God care? Yeah. But his kingdom is so much more important. If we're going around trying to bring signs and wonders for our own benefit and our own kingdom and our own following, eventually we're going to start faking it because they're not going to be there in that moment. 
And then number two, what signs and wonders are not is the act of a human. You are not performing a miracle, God is. Yes, God uses us, right? Of course he uses us and it said that they perform signs and wonders, but not in their own name, in his name. It's not about me. We have to walk in humility when it comes to signs and wonders. Yes, again, God uses us. And we might be the one who, who steps out in courage and faith to bring the, 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 the sign and wonder. But God is the one doing it. I don't have that power. Holy Spirit inside of me pushes out the power. When we see a miracle, the one shouldn't be like, look what Dustin did. Whoo! She'd be like, look what God did. And I can just sit there being thank, saying, thank you, God, for using me to bring this miracle, but it's really God doing it. God chooses you and I to be the carrier of his power. It's not the other way around. And I want to go through this next question is, how do we see more? So I think one of the biggest questions that we have as, as followers of Jesus is why aren't we seeing more? I think that's a question I ask. Like, God, why? And again, I'm gonna go so basic. Like, I'm not gonna give you this like deep, like, so basic. How do we see more signs and wonders? Number one, ask. Like, again, this is not rocket science. Like, ask. If you wanna see more signs and wonders, if you want to see more miracles, ask. Ask. You know, one thing, you know, our daughter, she's uh, almost three. And I think she's mastered the art of asking. Like mastered it. Like, like she's got a life of mastery over this asking. Because she's also at the age where she tries to trick us. She's like, mom said I could watch a show. I'm like, I literally just heard her say no. But she is so persistent. Like, she will not stop asking me. She's like, can I watch a show? I'm like, no. Can I watch a show? No. Can I have some candy? No. Can I have some ice cream? No. It's like over and over and over and over and over and over. That takes a lot of strength and courage to keep on asking. Some of us, we go to God in a different way. We say, God, will you do this? We hear silence. We're like, cool. Cool. All right, no problem. We have to keep on asking. And Matthew 7, 7 says this. Keep on asking. And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking. And you will find. Keep on knocking. And the door will be open to you. Don't quit. Some of us, we've been praying for a miracle. And we prayed once. We're like, God. I need a fi financial provision. And then we stop asking. We don't want to be a nuisance. We don't want to get on God's nerves. We don't want to make him angry. And we're like, okay, I asked once. He said, no, no problem. Keep on asking. And we say, but I'm not seeing it. It's like, keep on asking. And we say, but I'm tired. Keep on seeking. But all I hear is silence. Keep on asking. What are you asking God for right now? I think some of us, the answer is nothing. And I think sometimes why? It's because we've become so proficient in our own strength that we think we don't need his support and his help and his love and his courage, his joy. We're like, I'm good. What are you asking for right now? You know, sometimes I believe signs and wonders come in the extraordinary, but I think sometimes signs and wonders come in the mundane as well. Sometimes they come in this like epic fire from heaven and sometimes they come in a little manger in a barn. You know, barely anyone there, maybe a couple donkeys, maybe a chicken, I don't know who's there. 
It's one scene I want to see is what animals are there. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's like a bear. Like, who knows? Like, I don't know. Imagine like a tied up bear in the corner or something like that. It's just like my like weird mind. Like, like was there a bear there? Like, I don't know. It's just an elephant. What are you asking God for right now in your life? What are you asking him to do? What are you asking for in, your, in your, the lives of your kids? What are you asking for, for God right now in, in, your, in your career? What are you asking God for right now in your business? What are you asking God for right now in your, in your marriage? What are you asking God right now for in our church? What are you asking God now for? This is a really big question because I think some of us, we've stopped asking. Don't stop asking. And then number two, how do we see more signs and wonders? Ask. And believe. Ask and believe. Not only do we ask, but we believe that he will do it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says this. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Real quick side note. How to start this prayer of asking is the same way Jesus did it. Your will be done, not mine. Your will be done, your kingdom come, not mine. But the question is, what are you believing for? What are you asking for and then what are you believing for? Maybe we're believing for something we haven't even asked for. Or maybe we're asking for something that we don't even believing for. Are you believing to be healed? Are you believing that God will bring a miracle in your life? You know what we have in this room? Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I don't know all the miracles. I don't know all the provision. I don't know all the healing. I know some of it. And it's amazing. Are you believing for a financial breakthrough? Are you believing for the restoration of relationships? Are you believing for the dream that you had when you were a child to actually start to become your future? We stand with you. And that's like the church. Like we come together and we ask and we believe and we go together. Ask, then believe. And I think some of us, we've gone into the habit of asking and forgetting rather than asking and believing. We're like, God, I need a new job. And then we go in um, online and we apply for 56 jobs. And then no one calls us back. We're like, God, why? He's like, keep believing that I'm going to give you what you're asking for. God will provide. I truly believe it. I'm going to invite uh, Mariah to play some, some keys. There's this last question I want to ask. And I think this is a question that sometimes we get wrong. Sometimes we don't know the answer to. But it's this question. If I don't see a miracle, is it because of a lack of faith, right? It's a big question. If I don't see a miracle, is it because of a lack of faith? Now, I've had people tell me in my life and around me that, yeah. I've, I've had people tell me, if I don't see a miracle, it's because you didn't believe or you didn't have enough faith. But, I'm gonna tell you what I believe. I believe that the answer to that question is no. Now, no, but can I tell you fully why? I, I, don't, I don't fully get it. Like I, I, I don't have the answer and I wish I could give you this deep answer, but I don't understand fully why sometimes when we pray for a miracle, it doesn't happen. When we pray for signs and wonders and we don't see it, I, I, I don't fully understand why. Maybe you've asked and you've believed, yet all you hear is nothing. You see your silence. But the thing I do know is that through it all, God is still on the throne and God is still good. And I know like, again, like I know this isn't like super like deep. The basic level is God loves you so desperately. He loves your family so desperately. He cares about you so, so, so much. That God is good even when I don't understand my circumstance. 
His grace is all we need. And his grace is our greatest miracle. If you remember, Paul experienced this exact thing. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 6 to 10. It says this, if I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. <laughs> so that's so like a weird statement to me, but it's like funny. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. It says this, even though I have received such wonderful, wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and the hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If you look at Paul's life, if you kind of go through it, as soon as Paul like dedicated his life to Jesus, things got pretty tough. Like, like pretty tough. Like a life that like I'm not jealous of. In prison half the time. Persecution, shipwrecked. Like, like he had a tough time. But then he writes this. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness. <clears throat> pleasure in the insults. Pleasure in the hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. He goes from, I'm not going to tell you Uh, he says, I, I, if I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. Two, I find pleasure in my hardships, persecutions, and troubles. You know, for me, again, I don't know the answer. Like, I, I don't fully understand sometimes why. There's a lot of theological debate on it and all this stuff. I, I, I don't fully understand it. But the thing that we have to understand, the basic level, is that God's grace is sufficient for you and sufficient for me. That the greatest miracle we will ever receive is not a physical healing, it's a spiritual healing. The greatest miracle that I will ever receive is when I come face to face with Jesus and I enter into eternal life. Like that's, that's, that's the most important like moment like that that's what it's about and so we can be here on earth we can be in hardship we can be in pain we can be in it all and our eyes are fixated on Jesus to say you are good I don't understand why this is so hard I don't fully get this circumstance I don't understand why I'm going through this but I'm going to pursue you with every with every amount of strength with every ounce of breath that I have I'm going to give you glory through it all he is so good. In our weakness, he is made strong. You know, if we want to go back to the basics of the church, we have to be in the business of bringing awe, the awe of who God is into everyday life. Bringing his love and his mercy and his grace into the future. You know, let us pray for courage to pray for people on the streets. Let us pray for courage to invite someone and tell them about Jesus. Let's, let's pray for courage to share Jesus with our coworkers and our neighbors and our family and our friends. It takes courage. The signs and wonders I believe are for today. If we want to start seeing more, we got to ask and believe go and our takeaway today is this that God is still doing signs and wonders today and our role is to ask and believe that he will do it to go into the world asking you know what if we were walking down the street and we saw someone who couldn't walk 
What if we went to them and we prayed for them? I think a lot of us were like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because what if they don't get healed? Like, what if nothing happens? And I'm sure you've heard this before, but what if something does happen? You know, in our minds, we're so fixated on it not working that we don't do it. In our minds, we're so fixated, yeah, it's not gonna work, so why would I even bother? Like, what if on the streets of Edmonton, someone could walk and someone went and prayed for them and they got healed and they were walking, celebrating in the streets and this crowd formed and people were like, what happened? It's like, God moved and healed somebody today. What if? I believe they're still happening today and our responsibility is to ask and believe. I want to pray for us because I think for me, the big thing I need right now is courage to actually do this. Like to actually go into the world and share Jesus with the people who need him. I need courage to go into the streets and pray for healing for people. That's what I need prayer for and I know that a lot of us probably is the same way knowing that courage is really what we need from God and that's what Holy Spirit comes and power comes and courage comes and strength comes so that way we know we're not going into the world alone we're going in the world with the creator of the universe on our team we can be like David when he went to face the giant he was not scared because he knew who he served so let's just pray uh, for courage today First of all, God, we thank you that you are a God who moves today. You're a God that you are still bringing miracles today. You're still bringing signs and wonders today. You're still bringing healing today. We thank you for that. And God, today we pray as individuals, as a, as a family, we pray for courage to ask and for courage to believe. That we can walk knowing who we serve, we can walk knowing that you are good. And God, I thank you that even when things seem crazy, when things are so chaotic and out of our control, we worship you and we fixate our eyes on you. God, help us as a church be known for how we love. God, help us be known for how much you move. That it's not about us, it's not building our own fame, it's not about building ourselves, it's about building you and your kingdom, not mine. So we give everything that we do at Known Victory Church, we give it to you. We give you our church. We give you our past, we give you our present, we give you our future, and we say your will be done. Your will be done. God, we pray for salvations. God, we pray for people to come into real deep connection with you, that they'll give you their life. God, we thank you that you are doing something powerful. And this is just the beginning. Almost 30 years, this is just the start of what you're about to do and what you're about to break out in Jesus' name.